Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks, and today we are answering the old age question, why do Lionel trains run on three rail track? After all, we know that rail trains run on two rail track, and scale model trains run, for the most part, on two rail track. So why did Lionel choose three rail track and other manufacturers along with them? I mean, after all, you never see a New York Central Hudson running along on three rail track. Oh, okay, anyway. Um, and some of you may be surprised to learn that Lionel didn't always use three rail track. As a matter of fact, early Lionel trains ran on two rail track. So why did they switch? So, as I was saying, early Lionel trains, starting uh, from the beginning of the company in 1900, ran on two rail track that was uh, an unusual two and seven eighths inch gauge. Uh, so these were metal strips for rails carved into wood ties. Uh, and again, this ran from 1900 to about 1906 when Lionel switched to a different track type. So why did they switch from two rail track when they had it right the first time why did they switch to three rail track? Well, there are two main reasons. One is electricity. And the second is economy. In electricity, two rail track requires that each rail, I'm sorry, each wheel has to be insulated. Otherwise, a metal wheel, and again, at the turn of the 20th century, the cheapest and easiest ways to make model train wheels was using tin or pot metal, and that metal would complete the circuit from one rail to the other. And so if you had one rail is positive, one rail is negative, and the motor running off of that, the wheel would complete the circuit, cause a short circuit, and this is a problem. So each and every wheel needed to be insulated. And the insulators available at the time Again, we're talking 1900, um, we're looking at paper, cardboard, uh, fiberboard, and these things over time wear out pretty easily. And once that insulator fails, you have a short circuit. And this was a common problem with these early Lionel and other manufacturers electric trains. Insulator failures led to many short circuits and that led to unreliability of the trains. Secondly, the economy. Insulating each wheel increased material costs and increased labor costs. So not only Lionel, but other manufacturers were looking for a way to eliminate that cost so they could mass produce their trains at an economical price. So the first solution to this was developed by the German firm Merklin. Uh, they were primarily known for their mechanical wind-up and also live steam trains, but Merkman started making electric trains uh, somewhere around 1895. The exact date is of some dispute among historians. But in 1900, Merkman started making three rail tubular track for their electric trains. And not only Lionel, but other manufacturers soon followed. So since you no longer had to insulate each wheel with the three rail track, only the locomotive wheels and the center rail require any type of insulation. All of the other wheels, all of the other rails are fine. So Lionel beginning, began producing their three rail tubular track in a new gauge they invented, two and a half inch gauge in 1906. And in a, a great marketing ploy, Lionel named this new gauge that they developed they named it Standard Gauge, and they trademarked the name. This helped Lionel uh, stand out among the other manufacturers and soon become the leader of American toy train manufacturing. Other companies like American Flyer and Ives and others, when they started making two and a half inch gauge, they couldn't call it Standard Gauge because Lionel had that term trademarked, so they called theirs Wide Gauge. And this three rail tubular track system remained the industry standard uh, all the way through World War II and, um, and beyond. Scale modelers and scratch builders also used third rail, only when they hand laid their track, they often put the third rail on the outside 
uh, thinking that that made it less visible uh, and more realistic looking. And again, for the same reasons that Lionel and other manufacturers did not use two rail track, these scale modelers at the time didn't either. They had the same problems coming up with uh, the proper type of insulators at an economical price. And for scale modelers and scratch builders, this was still the standard, uh, not only through World War II, but into the 1950s as well. In 1942 and through 1945, toy train production in the United States came to a screeching halt because of World War II. While the toy train manufacturers were making supplies and parts for the Allied war effort, designers had the opportunity to rethink their toy train lines and retool for new opportunities after World War II. New materials were going to be available and new techniques were available and manufacturers were going to update their toy train lines. The most important of these new materials was... Plastics. I offered to let George in on the ground floor in plastics. Yes, plastic. Plastic was cheap, plastic was easy to work with, and important in our case, plastic is an insulator. And so now, instead of fiberboard or cardboard or paper insulators in wheels, you could use plastic instead, either entire plastic wheels and axles, or just plastic inserts into the metal wheels to provide insulation. This is the route that Gilbert decided to take with their American Flyer line. So they switched to two rail and continuing a scale move that they had begun before the war, they moved to 3 inch S gauge, S scale, uh, and two rail operation. So these new plastics made the insulators cheaper and easier and American Flyer made the plunge. But what about Lionel? Lionel was the industry leader, and to them, if it wasn't broke, don't change it. They instead focused on upgrading their couplers, adding new operating cars, and expanding on the existing dominance they had in the O-gauge market. Other manufacturers followed Lionel's lead and stayed with three-rail track even after World War II. They didn't change because one, they were the industry leader and they thought, why take the risk of changing when you're already dominating the market? And secondly, to provide backwards compatibility. American Flyer fans couldn't run their post-war trains with their pre-war trains. They were different gauges and different types of track. But with Lionel, you could buy a brand new 1946 set and run it just fine with your 1917 set. The track was compatible, the motors were compatible, the electricity was compatible, everything worked. So you could run dad's trains with junior's trains and even granddad's trains all worked together, Lionel, 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 with of course a few problems with couplers and a, a few things with turnouts and things like that. The other thing that this third rail still provided um, advantages for were things like special effects, insulated rail wiring, uh, reverse loops without any special wiring. And so this three rail track had its own inherent advantages as well. Another reason to not change. What about today? Today we have modern electronics, we have remote control, we have command control. We have wonderful scale models dominating the O-gauge market. So again, why not change to three rails now? Well, again, this backwards compatibility of being able to run a modern Lionel locomotive on the same layout on the same track with a hundred year old Lionel train. So that again, dad and junior and granddad can all share the same layout with the trains of their era and be completely compatible. Another reason is that through the years, two rail O-gauge trains have been available on the market, but they have never sold as well as the three rail trains, again, because of this backwards compatibility. So why take the risk of alienating your, your customers to switch to two rail trains when everyone seems to be perfectly fine using the three rail? If you want to switch to two rail, there are options available, but three rail still dominates the market even after a hundred years. So that is why 
Lionel trains now and still and ever since about 1906 have used three rail track versus two rail track. I hope you found this interesting. Like it, share it, please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and next time we'll see some trains running as we come back to Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Keep those trains running and we'll catch you next time. Have a great day.